Hello everybody and welcome to Painting Big Child Creatives. This will be our first episode right here and this is a 72 millimeter figure. I think you can just tell by how big it is compared to my hand. Bigger than the usual 28 mil that you see me working on. And what I wanted to do is actually try and paint this skin tone over here. This is from the actual Big Child Creatives site. I can take you over there right now and you can see there we go. Uh, kind of interesting black orc skin tone there. Maybe we throw some kind of white face paint or some kind of white tattoo thing. I'll see what I can look up. I'll just look up, you know, do Google some things. We got some neat weathering that we can do over here on his anchor. So we'll try and do some of that. Doing it with the oils, that's going to be a lot of fun. And we will be using, uh, we're going to be using our oils again. I thought this would be another really fun example for using our oils, but maybe try, maybe try out some different colors here. So we've got, especially this one here, the purple matter. This is one of those, remember I say you, you get the basic ones and then you sort of treat yourself to some specialty ones. So yeah, this one right here, you're uh, really not going to find it in these kind of starter sets like this. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I, I would guess that this the original tube of this probably costs as much as this whole set of six. So this this is those one of those colors that you just kind of say, well, you know, I'd like to I'd like to have something like this. Now where's ah here it is. <clears throat> so there's the actual tube of it right there, and you can see that we've thinned that down because it's it's kind of like an alizarin crimson, but it's got a little bit more of a bluish tone to it and I thought that could be fun mixing this most likely with uh, Payne's gray olive green maybe even some phthalo green so we're gonna have some fun color combinations just stuff you really haven't seen me do too much so far and then obviously a lot of heavy-duty rusting we got some wood here I did add this extra piece of chain here so we'll see how that works out maybe we'll rust that up too I just I think this will be a little bit different and you'll see now how the green can contrast with the flesh tone as well I know we like to sometimes just do our own color schemes but I thought here you know why not just show how that one was interesting gave me some ideas as far as those new colors go oh and actually black leather here which I always forget to do I mean, almost all the time I'm making leather brown. It doesn't have to be brown. It could be anything. So there's just so many things here that, that kind of pushed me maybe in different directions. We also have some non-metallic metals here on the, the pistols and everything. So I think this should be very, very fun. What we'll do is we'll get those paints out on the palette here, it, kind of in the usual way. And we're going to do that initial color placement. It's not a base coat. It's... Not even technically a shaded base coat. It's just literally slapping colors on there that we can manipulate later on. I do have sponges out here too. So I think we're going to use the the full armory of all our different oil painting weapons. And we're going to use those next. Okay, so we've got our paint out on the palette. And we're going to do those initial color placements like we... Always do at this stage. We got some Payne's gray over here, cadmium yellow, raw sienna, burnt sienna. That's a raw umber. This is your, that's your magenta right here. Your quinacridone magenta. There's your purple matter. That is a burnt umber right there. That's your cadmium green, phthalo green, olive green, titanium white. And we'll start off with some, some of these darker. Darker glazes. I'm gonna just get myself a little bit of the white spirits out here, and we're just gonna have ourselves a couple of piles of paint to work with here. This is the same white spirits. I just got it in a little, little container here. And what we'll do is we'll mix these around and let's start to cover cover up a few areas here. Now it's going to be a little bit on the shiny side, but see, we're already, we just thin some of this down. We'll use our sponge thing. 
this part's going to be a little bit more absorbent because I did add some Sculpey to this. So I built out the base from what you would normally see here. Let's get some more of our... Here we are. I'm not even sure just how much I'm going to be painting the wood here. Mostly because I'm going to have to hang on to it. So I'm, I'm mostly just putting this color here so that's not primer anymore. And as always, it's the same old, same old Badger Steino res. Nothing different about that. Might have to fish out some more colors here too. I'm just going to hit the anchor. Boy, and as soon as I did this, again, I always talk about you get so used to working with acrylics and then you work with oils and you're, you're working in that frenzy I almost started going into a frenzy here, thinking, oh, I gotta, I gotta get to the sponge and wipe this stuff so it doesn't just solidify here and dry. And then I said, well, wait a second. These are oils. That's not gonna be a problem. So yeah, it can, it can happen to even someone who is pretty darn used to using oils. I almost said, oh man, I gotta, I gotta hurry this up here. Gotta get going. No, I really don't. I can chill here. It's the whole point of using the oils, of course. Can you, yeah, I think you can see what I'm doing. I'm just again, all I want to do is get this stuff covered. Not gonna worry about the edge here or whatever. Certainly not at this stage. It's not important. Not important. I'm really curious though to see what kind of color blends we are gonna get. Oh, look at that. See, that's already. Yielding some interesting, you know, let's get a little bit of the burnt sand in there already. I think some really fun stuff's going to happen on this. I I think we did the Black Sun 72 mil. I think it was still 72 mil because really, and this is a big old black orc, so it, it should be larger proportion wise than just a human figure. Because at first time I was starting to think, well, maybe maybe that other one wasn't 72. But no, I could see this still being 72. He is a black orc. He is a black orc after all. Now I'm going to throw some I'm throwing some of that phthalo green in there too. Because I can. And I just did. I'll let that mix with some of our brown here. I'm just going to make sure I've gotten, gotten some stuff down in the crevices here. All right, almost good to go here. Let's do a bit of our Payne's Gray mix onto this, this can. Well, I think it's more of a mace there, not a cannonball. Do we have? No, we have actually sort of a brownish leather color here on his on his boots. So, not, not that we they have to be this initial glaze wash, whatever you want to call it, has to be brown. It could be blue it could be red I mean doesn't matter but it is it's a little bit darker it sets a tone it kind of creates a little bit of an initial look at this but instead of having that light primer there this is it's something that we can build from work off of but unlike say when we do this with the pro acrylics or the reaper clears or liners this will well especially if you keep working on it today this will still be wet and it'll be something that we can work on now sponge time and we're going to look at how much paint is going to be removed there and then I'm going to cut up a sponge as well And the goal is uh, yeah, not to wipe away all of the stuff that you put here. It's leave as, as much as you can. But uh, there we go. So we can see that green that's left behind. That is just really nifty. Yeah. It's it's fun to do this with acrylics, but boy, with oils. There's just a little something extra at this stage because you just you get a, I think a little bit more 
oh gosh, was it staining maybe? Because, well, you think about it, there's oil stains and acrylic stains for wood. And a lot of people just, they really like the oil stains because it just, it really gets down into the wood. It's, there's a reason why paint was oil based at first and not acrylic paint. And those, here, let's get this down into here. Those oil based stains, they can be, they really just enrich the wood, make it more, a little more luster to it. Yeah, and I want to just make sure that some of the biggest puddles are sort of absorbed here. This is just a simple wooden plaque from Michael's Hobby Lab or Dick Blake or wherever it was from. Nothing, nothing special. I don't really get into the whole plinths thing. It, it's not my deal. I really don't do the painting contest thing. Uh, I, it's not like I wouldn't want to have fun messing around with one. I, I have a couple of, I think just a few old resin plinths that I could play with, but I do have some things that I could sort of jerry-rig a plinth with, and uh, maybe I'll show that. That could be interesting, actually. Now here, the pants are certainly not going to be that color. But I am just going to throw it out there. And I'm even going to let that get a little bit more of the brown into it. I just I don't want people to think that we're doing any kind of traditional sort of base coat. See, look, I'll even let the the green just works its way over onto his sash coat. I can't quite. Uh, I'm gonna have to see what that is. I'm gonna have to go look at the website. Well, actually, we can do that together because I actually have the website link hooked up. I'm also gonna maybe have to secure my palette there. Well, this is that initial sort of messy stage anyway, where we're really working that palette pretty hard. I know it's going to be a little hard for you to see. There are going to be some shadows. But, well, this is a shadow area. All right. So consider that set. I'm going to throw a bit more maybe of the Paints gray out here too, because why not? There's some paints gray. Yeah, grab a little bit of that. And with some of my browns here. Maybe even a little bit more of that raw sand already going to let some of that raw sand in there. Maybe a little bit of burnt sand over here and just let things... If we're, we're covering up the metals. Don't even cover. care if it covers up his hand here. Remember, it's all about getting that primer covered, covered which is the usual Badger Steinal Res. Nothing super different about that. Alright, I'm going to cut up some more sponges here. There. Okay, I'm going to do another, get another one of my sponges here. That's good. And it leaves behind just enough hint of a color. Yes, it makes it darker. But it's, the best I can say is it just kind of primes the surface. It gets it, not only will the, the paint sort of flow on there a little bit easier, but we can start to do some initial mixing and blending. And it it, it sort of also grays down the, the color a bit more right off the bat. So, because you're already starting to mix in some cases, maybe even opposites together. Yeah, look at that. It's already starting to get a little bit of a difference. Now let's let's see what we can do with our skin color here. So I have mixed the that's the purple matter with the 
greenish color like I was telling you. Yeah, look at that. Boom. Look at that. That is a nice, rich, deep red. So did make a brown because the, the color had just enough of that kind of thalo or a, enough of the alizarin crimson. And I am going to get a little bit of that quinacrin on those. So that gets also a little bit on the purple side in a few areas. I might even let some of the burnt sienna work its way in. So then it gets a little bit more towards the reddish side of things. Big old orca like this, you certainly don't want to just lay down one flat tone. Now let's make sure that we get a little bit of a little bit of our white spirits in there to get that thinned down. That the chain, this this belt thing here will oh what the heck. Just go right over the top of it. Who cares? And I'm gonna go right over the top of these things. I don't care. It'll just mean that they've got some shading on them. What the heck? I'm going to go over that one, too. And again, this is going to... It, it's a little bit shocking for folks that have not really worked like this before. There's a little bit of Payne's Gray works its way in here. And I do realize that it, it's... That there might be some uncomfortable moments for you. You're all excited about seeing that, doing this, and then you see kind of this stage, and you go, oh, man, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You just have to work your way through this. And as long as you got your high-quality white spirits and some decent oil paints, that is something. I guess I don't mention that quite often enough, those... For all that is good in this world, do not get the cheap, nasty $5 set of oil paints because what you'll have is a cheap, nasty set of oil paints that cost $5 that you can't use. And you'll be very, very sad about that. So don't be sad. Just spend an extra 20 bucks and get yourself some decent oil paints. You do not have to spend $20 on a tube of paint. Uh, yes, that is. See, look at well. Just to add a little bit of the white into that, completely change that around. You don't have to go fancy with the colors at all. Even even an alizarin crimson would have made something sort of similar to this. Okay, so I think we've got basically our primer that is covered here. Now let's grab ourselves some more sponges. Let's do some spongy type things. Yeah. Boom. Look at that, what it leaves behind. Something that we can certainly work with. And the oils, they... To me, I think the 72 mil figures are just the ideal subject matter for the oils because... You work. You can work in those big, <coughs> sorry, broad strokes like that. <coughs> sorry about that. It's in the 30s here. Yes, it's May, and it's in the 30s. So heater's going off, air is dry after being super wet for three days. Look at that. So again, it's... It, I know maybe some folks, they look at this, and this still looks like a horrible, hideous mess, but to me... I already, I can see some of the things that are left behind that I can, I can play off of those. And it's all about initial placement of the colors here. It's, I can't really call it glazing or anything like that because it's really not so much of a glaze. It's really more of a just, we're slapping on the paint and seeing where it goes and setting things up for the rest of the figure. But the idea is to not have too many of those super glistening pools of paint left behind. A little bit in your crevices there, that's okay. 
All right, but that now starts to bring out some of the shapes. I'm, as I was doing this this layer here, I was just made aware of shapes that I didn't see before. Another handy thing, it, it, it lets you sort of feel your way through the miniature. Yes, you're, you're assembling it, you're filing all the mold lines, doing the thing, but you don't necessarily... You're aware of the, the pieces and all that, but not really some of the details. There are some details that just sort of reveal themselves as you're painting. You go, oh, okay, I just didn't really notice that before. That's about a little more air. Some of our oil removed there. Yeah. There we go. What I also want to do this time, another little change of pace. So normally I would just start working on this and, and plowing ahead with it. What I'm going to do is, is maybe even let this sit for five minutes. Because I'm always talking about that. See, here's where we added some of that burnt sienna until that changed that around. We will let these just have a chance to kind of, like I said, not dry, but just settle in place. And we'll get back, and then we're going to start to throw in, not necessarily lighter colors, but more of our sort of thick layers of paint, thicker layers of paint. How does that sound? So, yeah, we'll, we'll do that next. And I think that's going to be very fun. Let's start to work in some of those regular colors now. And I'm starting to see, yeah, there's, I don't know if you can tell in the reference, there's also some of the warmer colors. So we're going to have to make sure we work in some of that burnt sienna too we don't want to forget about that because remember we we did that with those initial washes and it gave us that little bit of warmth that we're looking for there's there's a little bit of purple there's a little bit of warm so yeah look at that now another thing and i kind of have to keep reminding myself that burnt sienna can be it's another one of those more translucent colors, really, when you think about it. See here, okay, we got some of that pool of the original color, and that then mixes with what I put there. And it just, boy, that really, it's almost like it's just a color that you've positioned there, and it's just sort of waiting for you to access it. And that's what we're doing now, the big old, big old craft brush. And you can see we have not thinned down the paint at all. We're, we're working pretty much straight up paint here. There has been no thinner. However, we are doing some of that. So we're, I don't want to say we're sponging some of the paint away, but we're just sort of scumbling some of that paint. Look at this. So you can see, look at that. It's, it's not a dry brush, but this is where, oh my goodness, it, as crazy as the dry glaze sounds, this is this is really a very wet dry brush. <laughs> We're sort of dry brushing the color on, but see how it's just sort of buffed and scumbled on. And see how it's got a little translucency to it. I know a lot of times people say, "Oh man, that the oils didn't cover. I want them to cover. They were streaky." Well, here's an instance of literally transparent paint. But it doesn't really have the streakiness to it. Because what we're using the bigger brush, it's a soft brush. That helps too. But this is maybe, I want to say this is probably the first time where I've really all out tried to use the transparency of the oil on its own as a plus. As opposed to maybe trying to overcome it by adding some kind of... Uh, not necessarily white, but even some kind of a, even this, that's a more opaque color. Any of these are, are more opaque, not just white. But this time around, I wanted to see what could I do with a more translucent look at this. And you can, now of course there's liquid, and we haven't played with the liquid yet. That is probably going to be on something larger like this, or maybe even bigger. Maybe even a bigger critter. Uh, because I've got a gigantic Dark Sword Dragon, 
And I mean, by gigantic, I mean this guy will, would be dwarfed by it. And maybe that's where we start to play with the liquid to do things like this. So it is very... Oils can be transparent. They don't have to be completely opaque. Which, and that is another interesting potential advantage of them versus, say, your, your acrylic paints. Because, and I know most people just don't think of oils as being transparent, but they really can be. It is possible. Thalo colors, things like this. All of these colors, the sienna, these are most definitely more translucent. I mean, you can see through on the palette. Now, if we were doing this same thing as we mix some of that other color, yes, that changes that color. We pull that around. This is another way of also painting thick without painting thick. Remember, we talked about thick versus thin and everything else. Well, here we have not added any white spritz except for what we used to make it miniature paint consistency, right? But this is just a matter of kind of sponging that paint out of the brush and then, I, don't know, I guess you can't hear that sound. You can actually hear the sound of the brush scumbling against the surface. So it, it's less just straight up painting and a little more of the scumbling. I'm going to go, what have we got here for a second? You know, I'm going to maybe, we're going to change things just a touch here. So we have gone, grabbed a little bit more of that, that phthalo green, which we will, let's scoot that over, I'll mix it with a little bit of that, a little bit of the brown, and look, we got a dark, but see how it's got a little more bluishness to it, a little less warmth. And what we got here on the shoulder, see how that, that's different there? Yeah, this this is the part of the oils where this is why we're doing it. This is what the oils are about. This is what the oils are about. Being able to change like this. But I guess, oh gosh, in a more relaxed way with with the acrylics it's all so frenetic it, it, yeah it has to be in a way but i'm even seeing some yellowness in the skin tones here so that's that's fascinating now here we're going back to more of the transparency uh, hopefully this is going to show right here on the shoulder and it should and it does it does yeah now you know I took away so much of that paint and just left it down in the shadows. This is what I was hoping I could do. It was essentially too difficult to even preview for you or, or say this is what I'm going to try and do. It was just too too out there. It kind of had to be seen to be believed. I couldn't even describe it for you. You just have to see it. This is another reason why I don't do the, the speed ramping, the voiceovers, the cutaways, all that sort of stuff that I see all the time, which I just despair when I see that. Now, there is going to be another deal with using these particular colors. They are going to be on the shinier side. Even when they dry, there's going to be a little bit of a sheen to them. That's, that's the color itself. There was... There's pretty much nothing you can do as you're painting. Well, except while well, you mix some of your other more opaque, less shiny colors in there, which we are going to do. But I will show you this. So here, uh, this guy had a lot of the burnt sienna in him. And this thing, even when it dried, it wasn't this shiny, but it still it had a sheen. And then I just hit it with that same old Army Painter Dill Coat. Boom. Gone. Just all the sheen was even this had phthalo green in it, which is shiny. No more shiny. So what we'll do with this guy here is when he dries, we will just hit him with this. All shiny goes away. So don't don't be afraid. Never fear. Never fear. So see we've got I think we got all of his, his skin tone there. And here I'm thinking, oh I gotta get back in with the oils here and, and, and 
put the rest of his skin tones in and make it lighter and I don't have to do that. <laughs> I do not have to do that. Now, before I mess around with anything else, let's... I'm so tempted to just continue with the skin tones, but I am going to... Do something like this. So see, there's some of that raw sienna that works its way in there. Going to start to think about what's on these armbands. I'm going to see if I can't go back to the... Let's see if we can... Uh, here. I have to close that out, and then I think I can get... Aha! Now I can get to... Another, aha, this is what I'm looking, okay, this is what I wanted to see. And I'm just looking at the, so the black belt around there, they went with a darker green, uh, all right, I just needed to see that. Just needed to see that. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to using black on the leather, and I, I must remind myself to continue with that, because I think... That would be very fun. So here, look, I got some green, that all kinds of fun, different colors here, and boom, I'll just go right back into this. We'll let some of that existing color mix into there. And over here, too. Oh, look at that. That is, this is what I say, this is why I love the oils so much. Big old brush. Working wet into wet and I, I think of how many times I've painted things like these these strappings with the acrylics and when I see the the strappings and I, I've got to paint stuff in acrylics I just oh my goodness but with the oils it, it just it's so much easier to get interesting blends in in things like this yeah I'm gonna just hit these Tusk, they'll probably get painted over anyway by something else, but what the heck. I'm going to just throw a little bit of this here onto the boards. It's almost like I'm practically cleaning my brush onto the boards. I'm just kind of getting rid of some of that paint, literally. But it's also mixing together. It's also mixing together with some of the stuff. It's already down there, and it, it also adheres to the first chapter in the book go up all the color goes somewhere it must go everywhere and yeah, look at that I, I couldn't even tell you what colors are on this brush I couldn't even necessarily tell you what colors are mixing here doesn't matter it's irrelevant are, are they are they giving us an interesting result if the answer is yes then no other answer matters uh, nope, I was tempted to grab some of the white spirits, but what instead I'm going to just sort of mop some of that paint out of the ye old brush here. And and this is almost, think of it more like color placement 2.0 here. Or just it's a secondary color replacement, or color placement, not replacement. Well, I guess it is in some ways because we wiped away a bunch of it. You know what? Oh, I'm going to, not quite so much of the Payne's Gray. That's going to form a lot of the, the the metal parts here and actually the black leather. Yeah, who, who would have thought somebody would be so excited to paint black leather? <laughs> I guess that would be me because somehow I have just completely forgotten that as an entity which is equally unforgivable because, well, since I communicate many times a day with a leather worker who shows me pictures of leather that is every color under the rainbow and every texture possible, yeah, and somehow that just escaped me. Nah, whatever. <laughs> it is, ah, there's a nice dark green. Again, scumming that right in. Look at that big old... It's practically a fan brush now. We're, we're almost at Bob Rossian fan brush time. Which, oh, that's what I forgot to do. <laughs> I meant to order some small little canvas boards that would fit 
on screen here so you guys could see something like that. Well, next time. I did get some different brushes that I've never tried before. Uh, actually, some some sables instead of always using the the synthetic that you see. All right, time for some of the... Oh, look at that really special yellow-green. And in we go. And just like with the skin tone, it's going to blend into those initial things in the dark that are in the darks with the initial wash. But you can see how that's more opaque. This transparent on his shoulders and arms, but this more opaque. It's a more opaque color. It doesn't always have to be that green. We can even add a little bit of our raw sienna to it. So, so much more opaque really makes a big difference. And this is where I think you start to see where the oils are a big time saver potentially on large creatures, right? You got a dragon, big old wings. And think of how you can really that's another instance where trying to blend out wings is just maddening to say the least. And here, well, it makes it a little bit or a lot easier. Yeah. Doesn't take long now. Yeah, see how we're starting to uh let's see, what does that gotta that's gotta be more of a I think that'll be more of our black leather. I'm going to sneak in a touch of the white there. It takes it off of the yellow slightly, which is looking for a little bit away from that yellow and boom. In we go. Now I could I could also do the thing where I plop a color down and we grab a blending brush. But I also want to try different. Now here I am. This is the first little bit of the white spirits that sneaks in, and sure enough, that covers. It, it's I don't want to say it's like magic, but I was I was sensing a disturbance in the force. It wasn't letting me place color, and all it took was just a little bit of the white spirits changes that around. I will now take the paper towel, and that is what comprises deep cleaning at this stage. That's what we're looking for. Paint's gray. Pains, but maybe a touch of that brown over there. And now, time for a black belt. Well, it's not going to be black because, well, guess what? We didn't use black. But it is significantly dark. How, how does that sound? We'll go with that. We're going to actually get these. Oh, some little grenades that he's got here. Although, I mean, depending on size of a human, those could almost be small cannonballs from a parrot gun or something like that. Oh, yeah. So I, I just have to remember this in the future. Black leather. I'm not sure. Maybe... I'm trying to remember how many times I've actually painted something black leather. Now, there might have been, well, especially like a coat or something like that, but I'm just trying to think of a strap or belt that I painted in black leather, and it's it's really hard for me to remember an occasion where I did that. So this might be uh, certainly the first time I'd, I've done it in oil. There, there's no doubt about that. No doubt there. And we've got our that nice rich dark in place. Uh huh. We have another. We have another belt, so we shall do some more of our darker color here. 
This will have probably more just in general darks in it than a typical typical thing you see me paint. It was another reason why I just thought, yeah, I'll do, I'll just go with the, the color scheme that they have because it it just seemed to have the potential for a lot of interesting things you have not seen me do before and it's always good to have yourself do something you haven't done before. Now, before, before I forget, I'm going to grab some of my ultramarine blue here. Yeah, we'll grab a little, a little bit of ultramarine blue. We're going to just chuck that over here. Looking to do something on the, on the anchor here. That's about, that's it. That's what I'm looking for. Whoa, not that dark. There. Oh, I also have some cerulean blue that, that's going to be on the way. Ah, oh, look at that. Nice. And look at, see how it, it's, it, as I do this gentle brush stroke, real gentle brush stroke, it, it's, even this is mixing with those initial glazes so that it's not a super pure blue-gray. It gets a little bit, I don't want to say oxidized, but it's like pre-weathering. Think of it maybe like that. But cerulean blue, I'm I'm looking forward to that because it's a, it's a unique color. It, it's one that's you could make it. You know, you could mix it yourself. But it has because it is cerulean blue and not just basically a, a faux acrylic, say GW color that looks like cerulean blue or essentially sky blue it just it has different properties as far as well in watercolors it would be something that you would call sedimentation that really doesn't mean anything to you guys probably unless you're a watercolorist but it is important aha speaking of important we're already going to start thinking of some bluish highlights here on our black leather especially anything that faces the sky that's also going to set it apart from the skin tone already begins to set that it's, it's dark it is most certainly a dark bluish gray but it, it, it separates itself a little bit from everything else let's maybe do some stuff on the pistols like you do there we go just letting all those previous layers mix in with what we've got working here You have to be bold with it. You have to be willing to let it mix together. Otherwise, there's really no point in using the oils. If you're going to use the, the usual acrylic, you know, layer this, then glaze, then layer again. At that point, then maybe you just stick with the acrylic paints. But if you want to, if you want to do the oils thing and, and really have fun with it and really take advantage of what it does, that's where you'll have to relinquish some of that the control that that type of control uh, we'll, we'll phrase it that way you're not necessarily relinquish relinquishing control easy for me to say you just you're giving uh, into a different type of control now we got some of the raw sand one of the last things i'll mess around with here is see what we can do on his boots here See if we can give those a already start to give them a little sense of being some lighter tones here again with the with the raw sienna. I'm gonna add some greens into here too. But right now it, this is as close to a shaded base coat, I suppose, with oils as we're gonna get. Probably about as close as we'll get to that. 
There's more things that I'll obviously be playing with here as we go along, but see, I can even. We'll take a little bit of our titanium white. I still have to get some zinc white. And see, just you know, how is that? Is it a is it a little more intense white? How does it work with? especially those thalo type colors that tend to be really massively influenced by when you add white with them or something. You never know until you try. I will think about some of this here on our planks. Now these are the Sculpey planks that I, I did. Some of those Sculpey planks, these more of just that. That's the resin, the original resin that came with it. it. It's a little, I guess they wanted to make them almost like vignettes or something so that people could put them on plinths. But I definitely had to, like these boards are all Sculpey boards that I did out here. I want to make sure there is a difference in lightness and darkness. You can see I'm working some of the green in some of these boards too. Most certainly, I mean, these are heavily weathered boards here, so you want to get them not a dead gray, but again, have some kind of a green mixed in there. So what we will do now, and I, I mentioned that we we're going to let that sit for a little bit. You know, even here, I'm going to give it just a few minutes to sort of just sit there. And now we're going to start to add in maybe some lighter colors under this symbol. We'll advance the skin tone and some of these other areas, and we're going to do that next. So let's start to work on some lighter tones in blending. That's kind of a generic, that's not precisely everything that we're going to do, but I'm also going to move. Ah, you can still see that in the image there. I just, wow, look at this. I mean, I don't want to say that's dry. It's not dry. I can push it around, but it's that's not very old, that paint that's sitting there. I, I, it's amazing to see the difference. Now, I'm going to go, yeah, here's a little bit of white into here. Now, that's going to start to make things a little more opaque. Ah, oh, good. You can see that now. Now that that is what's going to happen. You just look at this. See, it's some of the opacity takes over a little bit, and it should. Well, I guess it'll start to get also a little bit less shiny as we start to add colors. It just tend to be less shiny. So we're just. So look at what happened there versus there. I think, I think you can see a significant difference there already. We are going to now get some of the sienna in here. Am I in the right spot? I do believe so. Because remember, we're not just putting this layer on top of a dry color. We're we're putting this layer on with the assumption that it's going to mix with previous layers like this. Ah, okay. See that and see how that starts to mix with what's already there. We're doing the same thing over here. But if I want to maintain some of that warmer red. I can, but it's it's all about taking what's on here and blending with it. This is what cuts down on the overall number of layers that you need. It's what cuts down on the overall time that you need to paint something like this. And I guess too, I, I should say that it's not necessarily that you want to rush your way through this but what what's nice is that you can at, at this stage do things 
that conserve time here where so maybe you get to do an extra five hours doing something more elaborate on the base or now you get to make a more elaborate 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 print plinth easy for me to say so think of that let's say the the overall time in this is just 15 hours just to throw a number out there well if you had as it was we mix this together like this if this saves you four hours of just raw painting time or maybe even just three hours of raw painting time you could you're subtracting the painting time so now you're you're shifting that time over to the plinth you're not adding a whole separate three hours to do a more elaborate plinth it's or basing or whatever other extra thing you might want to do on this that we don't do in in this little example you have that you gain that time back and, and you gain that time back by just taking away some of the more repetitive things or more laborious things that you would have had to do and now you're left with more time I don't want to say for the fun thing. It's not like painting the miniature itself is not fun. But some kind of really super decorative base, plinth, whatever. You have maybe a part of a sail. I had thought about that. Some Like a flag draped over the plinth right here. But I wanted to keep this one a little bit simpler. On future things, we'll we'll play with that some more. I, I really wanted this to be about well, things like these these flesh tones here. As I try and work a little bit of that sort of magenta skin color into the leathers here. Shall we do some more? I think we shall, and we are going to really get into some of the. Sienna here, maybe. Look, we could even go, can even make a brighter, almost kind of an orange skin tone right here. Oh, I'm gonna get more of that cadmium yellow deep in there. Where are we? Yeah, don't want it to necessarily be all the the cooler, lighter color here. So this is it's a little effort to make sure we keep some of that warmth in there. Now I will. I will be taking away some of the paint. Well, getting the paint off the brush, and I'm gonna be doing this is where I'll use the the blending brush thing because we're we're getting to be in that stage here. I'm also on the verge of saying, okay, we've got to start going thinner because the the brush is very soon not gonna be able to put more, at least onto these areas, at least onto these areas because. It's sort of been thick, thicker, thicker, and now we've got to go the other way. But first, as I take some of the paint away, let's see what sort of blends we can do. Oh, like that. We've got just a couple of these. Around on the arms here. I also want to see if I can't sneak in some some of the ochre or, or some of the that raw sienna face wise let's let's go with a got this a little touch of the green and then you'll see the, the, how warm that is and then how cool this is by comparison and we will put that on his face ears shoulder here this is where we have so much fun changing the color around so here you see how that's warmer right warmer 
and then all of a sudden it gets to be just a it's 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 almost like a purple color up here by comparison by comparison that's uh everything is relative and i'm just going to stick with the larger brushes at this point we won't get into the small ones yet we want to keep our focus in the right place See, I can go even lighter. And now you can see there's just a residue of the white spirits here, and that is letting me look at that. See that? See how that covers all of a sudden? That covers a whole lot more. A whole lot more. So, oh, do I want that on the? No, that's got to be more of a yellow there. When you find that the paint does not want to stick. That's where you, you you change your tactics, you change your thickness in your paint. Here we're gonna go back to more of a blending brush. Just got rid of the paint. Let's let's blend again, like you do. Yeah. How about some more blending? Bam yeah that is where it's at and look at that right there and now remember we were talking about if we want things to be a bit on the warmer side here I think I've got that in a decent spot uh, you know what I, I was talking about making things a little bit on the thinner side. We will do that. We'll make that thinner, and then the the paint will stick. Yeah, a little bit thinner. The paint will tell you, just like with the 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 non-metallics there. When when people will ask, well, how, how do I know what colors go where? The the miniature will tell you. Well, this started to tell me. Is it uh hello? You want this paint to stick, you better make it thinner. So we did, and it does. However, at the same time, if it is too thin, it may not cover, or it may just sort of tear away from the figure, which is why we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna put those couple of brush strokes there, like you do, and then we're going to Get rid of the paint out of the brush and blend all that. We're going to blend all that here. I do have to say that the direction you're holding the figure, the direction your brush stroke goes when you want to do that blending stuff, that can really have a big impact. Now even this right here, boy, if we were to let that sit for maybe even ooh, 10 minutes, ideally 15 or 20 and we just hit it with the brush man the the what it would do for us is it's it's mind-boggling it really is so i hope this this is i'm gonna take a little bit of blue into here i just hope this is not too mind-blowing here i know it, it can be a little overwhelming uh, it i have been massively overwhelmed these these past couple of months trying to figure out all new streaming platforms so kind of by default i've really gotten a sense of what it's like to be trying something that is just so insanely new and you're not really sure what the heck's going on you're just kind of hanging on for dear life and even with the oils for me when I first started out, I was kind of, <laughs> I was kind of hanging onto the edge of the lifeboat or whatever. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I, I didn't think a lot of the stuff that I'm doing on here, even this right here, I didn't even think that stuff like that was possible when I first started to play with these. I, I would not have thought that I could do just the simple little things that I'm doing just right now didn't think that was possible of course I really didn't have 
that was not a lot for me to look at as far as people using oils on miniatures. All I got to see were basically the guys using oils on vehicles. That was that was the extent of my exposure of oils on miniatures. So I was kind of, I just I had to do it all myself. I had to figure all that stuff out for myself. As we get, look at this, a little bit of, almost a little bit of reflected light onto our, yeah, some more highlight there onto our, our black leather. Let's let's mess with our greens here too. We won't forget about them. So we've got some of that phthalo green. However, I do want to get a little bit of the say less shiny type colors and boom right there. Just bang. Hit that. I might throw a little bit of that into the my lighter yellow greens as well. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, we're going to throw a little bit of that green into our black. And, oh, this is where it all just gets crazy. This is where we go wild. Do you see that? See, see that green? You see that green? Well, that's going to go in some of these little flesh tone shadow areas here. Yeah, I think you can see it. So I'm just positioning that now so that I can take the brush and go back in there if need be and, and do some blending with it. Yeah, look at this. So we have a whole nother color in our skin tone here. I'm going to take this paint out of the brush. Just a paper towel. Just sort of look at You can see all the it does two things. It gets the paint out of the brush, but it gives us it gives us the fabulous filbert brush edge, which we are going to use to then create a whole new color. We don't have to worry about well, geez, I need a greenish red to put in my shadows. Just the the oddity of that statement right there just tells you that hmm. Yes, thinking about it in a different way. Thinking about it in a different way. Now with a different, same brush, but yet a different brush. It's similar. Well, it's the same brush, but one is filbert. The other is not. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that to get some of this white and even some of my yellow here. So we haven't really done something like maybe this in a while. We haven't done something like this, but we're going to do this now. This is where things just, uh, uh boom, there. Okay. Back to our blending brush again. This is where we just plop the paint on there and then we push it around. So big old ugly masses of paint. We say, what just happened there? We say, what is that all about? And we say, this is what it's all about. It's about doing a bit of blending. And a little more. And a bit more blending. There we go. Oh, how's about a bit more here? Aha. some here. Remember we talked about some green on his boots. That is exactly what we are going to think about doing here. Again, the, the beauty of the oils, because I, I always add, I try to add something like this. See that green? They just added there 
won't even really be noticeable when it's all said and done. It, it's so easy to just add that little suggestion in with the oils as opposed to like there some green here's some green everywhere some green even here again I'm gonna take some of this and see what I can do on the some of the wood grain here like you do gotta make sure I don't get just too much light in, an, in a given area there don't really care about the anchor chain I might throw a little bit of a bluish gray over the top of that but rust will be the theme of the day I guess we'll we'll call it that I don't think I'm gonna focus too much on the the base here because it, it'll be hard for you to see that and I think I'll, just, I'll give you suggestions on that. We really want to focus in on our skin tones and the and the black leather. Some of those unique things. Now here is something that I've really been saving this for. Ah, okay. Now I don't want that to get too pink. Therefore, some of the orange goes in there. And we've got his... Uh, this thing, his little sash, I guess. But see, as that uh, the other colors mix into that, then it it doesn't get too too bright. Yeah, you know, we could put um, we could put little hearts on this thing if we wanted to. We could put little My Little Ponies on there. We could do whatever we wanted on this sash here. But I do like how see yeah, that even that pink just starts to blend in with our existing black. I think that's supposed to be part of the sash down in there. Looking at it, is there any other part of the sash? Sash pretty much gone at that point. So this is about as much of our sash as we're gonna get right here. And as I said, I realize that we've got a lot of shiny reflection things going on. That is why I'm going to try and have as many pictures as I can for you at the end here so you can maybe see what's going on. There, There is no good way, if this is your first oil painting video that you happen to be watching, so many other ones have come before, and with each one I always have to say, there, there is no good way to film oils or metallics as far as avoiding that sort of shiny look. It just, it's going to happen. That's, you can't avoid it. It's shiny paint. You just, you have to accept that and move on. Speaking of moving on, we will. See if we can do some other little areas like right here. Now this is another thing we talk about to pre ah, precision with the brush strokes, but not like it has to be precise and that you cover that thing exactly in one stroke and it's perfect. No, it's really more about doing it once and just leaving it and see that one brush stroke be direct that's it not precise direct see the brush stroke paint the brush stroke leave the brush stroke like here boom leave it do not keep going back in there and playing around with it see that I'm just gonna leave it I was tempted I was tempted to go back in there and mess with it and I said, no, can't do that. Got another, can see it there, again, another fresh brush stroke. Now we take this and we blend it out here. We'll do a similar exercise on this other side. So what we'll start to do next is we're going to play with some of these 
Dark Recovery. We're also going to start to develop the... F ah, we're going to start with the face. I think we're going to develop that some stuff in the face. No, no we're going to do this because we've left this... We have to leave that sort of settle for a little bit, I think. So we will mess around with some of the, the metals and the, the pistols and the black leather. So we'll, we'll do that, I think. That's going to be our next our next task here on this guy. I'm also going to not forget about this thing. See there, the the color that was already there just mixed so much with the paint that was on the brush, it wiped out the paint. See, look, I get one shot at it. Look at that. See that big dark blob there? That is the paint that was just already sitting there on the arm. So it, th those are the things you just got to just have to realize. You get kind of the one shot at it and that's it. Then you have to sort of reload, load up again and continue. I'm just gonna get a bit of lighter tone right here and as I said we're gonna we'll see what we can do here with some of our some of those dark leathers metal whatever yeah so let's do let's do some of this black leather and such next So next up we're going to play around with some of the some of our black some of our black here. Let's see what we can do with that. Let's see what we can do with that. Now, one thing at this stage we have to really start being aware of what's what's thicker, what's thinner. And first we are going to start with maybe something that's a little bit more like a I don't want to say a sky blue, but a different type of blue than what's on the that's what's on the leather here. Can you see that? Yeah, there we go. I just wanted you to see that was a brush stroke and not just a glossy reflection of the still wet paint. Let's do a couple of these here. Might even it just depends on how dark do I want these to be and how much how much of the sky blue do I want and well, let's let's just play around with it here never know until you try so here's a little bit of the there's your thalo green it makes it more of a turquoise color perhaps even more of a sky color then we're going to no, actually, I th think we're going to go the other way with those. Maybe more of a gold with the buckle here. I don't know if you can see what we're doing. I, did, I started going with that more of a sky blue color there, and then I realized, no, no, I don't want that. don't want that. I want it to be almost maybe more of a gold Also have to be thinking about that that chain here, so we're gonna start to let's clean this off here real quick. Yeah, I've got to start thinking about the chain. There's actually a little bit of a necklace there too, but because I've let this sit around, I'm able to actually do some fun and interesting blends that just wouldn't have been possible if I kept hacking away at this thing non-stop so it is I know I, I say it all the time but boy there really is something about just letting it you know we're gonna do some of that sky blue up here just on this part of the leather and then leave it then we're gonna do this here and leave it then let's get some of our get some of that 
metal color here. Put it on this chain. Put it on that chain. Maybe get some here on the these bombs. With some more chain over here. And the idea is if I throw this lighter color here, then maybe I can do one of my darker glazes. Maybe even have it have a little bit of rust, although there's already so much of a reddish color there. Maybe I don't necessarily want that. Let's see what we can do here. Here as well. I think I'm actually, ironically enough, going to lighten that a bit, and then we need to, to go more for the gold here. Let's uh, let's do that. We will take a touch of our white here and the yellow, and this is actually much thicker because we've been doing all that thinner and thinner and thinner. Now we see how that covers. If I just kept going thinner, it's not going to cover. This is the the hardest thing really to assess about the oils. It it's one of those things where you essentially just you do it and you learn it. There is there's no formulas that I can give you, there's no pattern because every figure is different. You're going to be holding the brush differently. There are so many things that will be different from what you do and what I do that it's just, it's pointless. And I know people love to have a, like a ratio or a formula. Oh, if I just have the formula, it'll be right every single time. Yeah, that's not quite how the way things work. I know people want them to work that way. That's just not quite how it happens. I just I want to forget about these because I will. I, they are they are metal after all, so best to do those. Let's see what kind of a orange I can work in here again. I'm gonna think about a thicker. Okay, yeah, there we go. A little thicker paint here, even on this key. And now here we'll we'll go back to our black here. This is the Payne's gray with the white. So this definitely we have to do something here. I'm just gonna, gonna prep it with that color there. And then we will take this sort of lighter, lighter grayish color, work that right over the top here. Have to make it somewhat reflective. Let's see if I can get a little bit of our red into that, like right there. I don't know if you saw, I think you can see that. I know it's sort of in shadow. I have to keep the lights lower because if they're if they're too high it it will just burn everything out and there'll just be mass reflections everywhere and not the kind of reflections that we want not those kind of reflections so and I can see even in the the, the picture there I'm gonna shoot some greens here Underset. See how they just get blended in there, so they're not really, you don't really notice them there. Then we're going to take this blue here, create a bit of a light for ourselves there. We're going to do the same. Eh, no, I'm actually maybe, I'm thinking maybe some of this lighter red here, something like this. 
teensy bit of reflection there. And as before, we just uh, spread that around. Then we've got this lighter blue. It'll go there. And I do realize that with these things as they are, you can you you see a bunch of brush strokes. Now what you end up doing afterwards is you do the cleanup stuff, right? You let the paint sit there for a little bit. You take your brush, and you just you can quite literally smooth things out. Think of well, I don't know how many people have worked with green stuff, but I know I I did this with epoxy sculpt a lot where I would let it get to very close to the point where it was almost cured and then I would go in there and actually sort of either take a my finger with some water and quite literally sort of buff the surface like you were buffing a a wooden cabinet or something like that with with some sort of oh, what are those like a varnishing type thing or whatever I know I don't necessarily have the exact words for that. Okay, this needs something here. So if that's going to have some blue and then some rust. No, I don't want to have green there. I do not want to have that. Because if I do, there's just no separation. I'm going to try this here. It's a it's a bluish gray. Yeah, if I turn it this way, I think then you can see it. We will try and light from underneath here. We'll get some here. And then maybe we go back to that green over here, and then it stands out from the red. And it is just a hint of the green. It is not a massive amount of it. It's just a hint of it. Just a hint of it, and then let's see what happens when we do oh something like that. And that is, believe it or not, that is much thicker paint. You would, it makes logical sense with the way I talk about this over and over again that the paint you see me putting on it has to be the thinnest possible paint, right? That's what you would certainly do with your acrylic paints. Well, that's what you do with your acrylic paints. This is not acrylic paints. It's a different animal altogether. Now, it's not that you paint with thick blobs. Remember, this has already been thinned massively just so we could have it be the consistency of miniature paint. So we're getting that, that nice little line. And it's not, again, I am thinning it down a little bit, but just in relation to the paint that's on there, this is much thicker. And I'm actually going to go over the top of this with some glazes. So it's it's all going to be worked both ways. That is something very important to keep in mind. I used to... When I was when I did oils back in the day, I used to think that you could only just work one way. You could work dark to light, and that was it. And you could never go back the other way. And then I realized, no, that is so not how that works. I'm even going to get, see this little bit of a tan right here. Let's see if I can, now we're talking about doing that buffing. Yeah, see, here, let's... This is very, it's actually really, really dry. It's not, it's, it's, yeah, it's thick, but it's actually very dry. And see that? Let me just pump that right into there. That really wasn't possible before. So those are the type of things that start to become, it's more of an instinct kind of a thing. There's not just, well, at this precise moment, this is what you do. And, and yes, we all wish there were such things where 100% of the time you did this one thing and it it always worked. But, I mean, that's pretty much not the case with anything 
and miniatures at all. We've got some more of these lighter areas to do now. And for short, the next thing I do want to hit is the is the face after this. Like I said, not really going to focus on the the boards here. Uh, I'll maybe do a few little odds and ends with that. But I was really more interested in the the skin tones. There was so many other more important things besides just the boards. So I'm I'm just trying to find a few places where I can maybe conserve a little bit of painting time to get you more. And even when it comes to, say, some of the weathering of these things, like the chains, I'll do a couple of the chains. The anchor is really the big thing. Uh, that is the big thing that, that's so important to this, this piece right here. You, you definitely want to be seeing that in its entirety. Because, yes, I, I thought about doing this in two parts. But there's just too many other, too many other videos going on at the same time, and that would really—it's more than just recording a video. There's so much more than that that happens. There's the editing and the rendering and the uploading, all of which take, well, in the case of some things, massive amounts of time. And I see it's starting to it starts to become a little bit more of a shiny pistol y type thing happening. We're gonna let me get a bit more of the sky blue into some places here. Let's see what I can do here on the this mace. If that's what it is. You will certainly throw some rust on this. That's why I'm just for, for right now. It makes no sense for me to try and go very detailed on color. I'm just better off after the fact. After the fact, after I've done some rust things, go in there and and tighten things up as need be, maybe. Because those, I don't want the, the the two things that I'm looking to have the most shiny would be, is, oh, and there's another ring here too, would be stuff like the the belt because that's supposed to be that sort of shiny leather, and the pistol, the pistol barrels there definitely want those to have some shininess to them. This metal. Uh, not so much. Not so much. What have we here for some more of our blue? Again, I'll just throw that in there. Grab a blending brush here. Just give me a second to do my paper towel thing. I know that might be put casting a little bit of a shine. I just had to hold it a certain way because, like I told you before, the the way you even hold your brush sometimes, which direction you're holding it, can be very important with the oils. I think directional strokes, well, they're important even with the acrylics, but I think oils also magnifies the importance of things like directional strokes, and that's just where the brush stroke follows the contour of your sculpt as opposed to kind of fighting against it and I see a lot of people and that that's just one simple way where they sort of run into problems is that the way even the way they're holding the brush in relation to the figure they're kind of fighting with it so here we're going to throw see what the, the darker green here if I throw some of this lighter oh but believe it or not I make this lighter stuff here it actually makes the black look it look darker over there. 
and it also will make it look shinier. So it, see, just took a couple little, little dabs there. We're going to do a similar exercise right there underneath the arm. We also need some reflected light here. I'm trying to twist this. Ah, I think now this the shine is gone. And I think you can see that. There. And I, I realize I'll say, oh, I'm working on the metals or whatever, and then I'll just kind of paint in an entirely different area. If I've got the right color for the right spot, I'm just going to put that paint right there. That's that's how it is. As we add a little more blue, to the, maybe even a touch in here. Let's see if we can. Aha, uh -huh, a little. There's a little clips here or whatever, little things holding it onto his belt and looking to get some lighter. Maybe even a touch of reflected light in a few places here. That's probably barely even going to show up when I take pictures of these, but. All right, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with your black. We can always do more touches on that after we do some other things. But what we're going to focus on next is things, especially the, the face and some other things in the skin tones and maybe some things there. So particularly the face, and we're going to do that next. Let's see what we can do with this face here, and we'll start out going to throw some eyes on him first and some other some other highlights so I'm going to grab me one of those nasty two hair brush type things here and we'll just start to get a few of these small little things in here and see what we can do now and try and get it in a good spot for you And again, it's a little bit bigger than it's going to be because we can go in and sort of take some of that away after the fact. He actually has basically what, what it kind of amounts to some heavy-duty eyelids, which is interesting. Now, let's see what we can do on his face here. We've got a little bit of our original purple here that's left. It's almost sort of a grayish, kind of a grayish red at this point here. And let's do some. Here, get some separation now. And if I was to do some kind of well, some kind of design, taking the the white paint or whatever, and and doing that, well, yeah, you know, let's maybe let's maybe get a little bit of crazy as it sounds. Let's get a little blue into his into his lips here. And, and maybe it's just these series, maybe it's just a series of dots or something, because those, to me, those, are, as being sculpted in, those are more like the, oh gosh, what is it, the the scarring, whatever that stuff is, as opposed to that's supposed to be some kind of face paint thing. And I, I the, the term for it escapes me. I'm sure it'll pop into my head when I'm finished with this and then it won't matter anymore because that's kind of how these things go. I am also, see I've got a little bit of green on the brush here. I 
I just want to find some different skins. They're not the same thing absolutely everywhere. So I put that in place. Got our blending brush here. And now it really doesn't look any anything like green. It just looks like a lighter sort of grayish color. Oh, what can we do here? under his eyes. Like I said, I don't want it to look like he's got some kind of crazy mascara thing or something like that, but also has to be... We also want some dark under there, so here we got our Payne's Gray. I am actually thinning that down. I have to give him some kind of an eyebrow there. And I'm going to switch my... Ah, that's why. <laughs> it's it's a two-haired brush, but it's not the one I thought it was. That can be sometimes the problem when they get that beat up and all signs of what they used to be are... Yeah, this is. I think this is more the one that I thought I had. I just want to make sure you can see some of this here. So we're going to give him, again, that darker, almost a bluish lip there, then. That's actually a bit of green there. I'm just going to let mix in there. Now we've got a, there's some, believe it or not, there are some teeth way down in there. I'm just going to make this very thin. You really won't even be able to see them, probably, until I get some kind of paint on them. And then I'll get some of that yellow on his tusks out here. Yeah, I just, uh, for whatever reason, didn't have the, the exact the brush that I thought I had. Because, well, all this stuff kind of gets wiped out. Gonna be curious to see what happens when the some of those new brushes get it. There are some sable ones, and they're in a size that I've only really ever used. Your your typical, oh gosh, what would you call them? The 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 traditional synthetics. So I've got some orange. I'm gonna see if I can't get some more than just. There. That's, that's, yeah, okay. Can I do that here, too? And then I'll put the, the darker color into his eyes. I was just trying to make that a little bit different. Again, just want to make sure you can see it. Really kind of focusing in on his face here. Almost uh, thinking along the lines of uh, a wolf's eye, a wolf's eye. Here, we've got too much on there. Also looking for a good, here, just to brace my hands. And now his eyes got to go right here. Can I make the other one line up in the correct spot? It seems that way, but it's got to be a little bit bigger. That's That does it now. But I've got to actually... Ah, it's, it's crazy. I've got to actually give him an upper eyelid here. And I actually have to make that some kind of a... I'm making that a, like a lighter gray. And I think you can see it's going to be right above his eye. Right there. Because it can't just all be dark. If it's just dark, there's, there's nothing going on. It's not interesting in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to give him a little more green on his lip here.
and even here on his face. So we're changing this a bit from the reference picture. I think the reference picture would be more something like this, something more along the lines of a sienna, a lighter sienna color is I think what they're maybe using in this area, but I also wanted it to maybe contrast with some of the air. I don't want it to all just be more shades that are similar to what's in his tusks. I'm just moving him over this so I can get to it and get a, a good angle with the brush. Now I've got to also get that same, if possible, greenish color here. Maybe even onto his chin. in a subtle way and now we've definitely got to do something over here on the side of his face. There's absolutely Zippo going on over there. So I'll start with this. I'm going to actually start with something that's almost a bit on the orange side here. And even just that <laughs> already sort of helps do something there. There's a whole lot of nothing even that makes a big difference. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it one more. This is thinner. We've thinned down the paint again. So that that gives me the ability to do a little bit of blending with that. Now I've taken all the paint out of it. Well, it, it's not a clean brush in, in the way that if you just set it down, <laughs> the paint wouldn't harden in it. It would. But it's clean and that we don't have tons and tons of paint sitting on it like we just did. And now we're going to use... See, this is where I, I talk about the, the paint sits there a while. You can actually then take a brush like this and just sort of push it around, push it around across the surface. We see things where maybe a blend is a little less tight than you'd like it to be. And now, it's a little bit of a kind of a rope here. Just kind of get some of the little indications of that here. That will most likely be tone down at a certain stage. We've got whatever these are, they're sort of hanging down from his neck. I couldn't tell. I'm going to get a little more yellow into his eye. And there's that little, you know, that little dot of a highlight that you see in the, usually on the pupil there. Now, I wish I could have kept that sort of orientated more towards you guys, but I just had to, like I said, sometimes I just have to turn this in a different direction to be able to see what I am doing. Now what I also, I'm going to just do a few more little things here on the face, then we'll let this sit as we've done before, and we'll play with our, our rust, especially on the anchor, and, and then a few other parts on the anchor chain and that sort of thing. There are some little things there that give his face some personality. Some wrinkles. Now 
Okay. And I, again, I know that's on the shiny side right there. Lots of reflections, but so we're going to call that okay there for now. And now we're going to play with especially some rust over here. And we'll be right back with that. We've been waiting for a while to get to some of our rust effects, and we are going to do that right now. Start over here, and the usual colors are involved. Obviously, we also have to have a decent amount of our white spirits here. So I'm going to get a few things going here. We've got the burnt sienna especially, but if it mixes into some of my, my green and also this raw umber over here, Think of that as your dark rust, and that's going to be a fair amount of it. We'll, we'll start with this, and then that's when we do the sort of watercolory type things. And I'm looking for, aha, this is the one I'm looking for. That is what we did on this blade right here. Same thing where we start out with that darker rust and went then lighter and lighter. We got all the oranges out here that we're going to need, so... First, we begin again with this darker. I just want to make sure I've got it where you can see it, and I gotta make sure that there is enough of my white spirits mixed in there. And you can see we aren't really dragging it across the surface; we're just sort of moving it across the surface. Thinking of it in more dots than anything else, because well. That is uh, going to give it more of a fresh from the sea look here. Let's, I'm going to hit the anchor chain that's down here too while I'm at it. Here, we'll definitely focus some rust over here too. But I don't want to necessarily just cover the entire thing with rust. That's... Well, I'd say that we take some of that away. That's the nice thing about oils. When you do this with water, you have a tendency to get a watermark. But when you do that with oils, you're not going to get... You just don't get that watermark because, well, you're using oils and not water. So, yay. Yay for that. And remember over here, we just... We're going to do the rust thing. We're just touching. We're just touching it to it. Boom. We don't paint with it. We just quite literally tap that on there and let the rust go as it may. Because as soon as we move that around, all of that wet white paint and lighter gray paint that we stuck there, well, that all goes, turns basically sort of pink. Whereas this is covering nicely. See, we can do the same on his mace over here. And you can see I just go back into the white spirits by itself. And geez, I'm already thinking I've got to quickly come back to this with my lighter rust tones. I'm just, I'm thinking acrylics. It's hard to get those out of your mind. And I realize what I'm working I, I I know I'm working with oils, but you're kind of used to, in your mind, that sort of frenzy of, oh my gosh, i got to get going. Got to get going here. I'm just going to drop in a few. Again, this is a, a chain that I added that fortunately was mostly the right size. It's... It's not going to be as thick as that resin chain is because it's it's resin, it's sculpted, it had to be thicker. I'm starting to think about maybe letting some of that rust get a bit more burnt sienna, so therefore a bit lighter. Remember, this is our darkest rust here. Darkest rust. See, I'm basically I wipe away some of the paint and then I just sort of soak up some of that. I, you know, I gotta get I can get a little bit of the rust color on here, then we get some separation with the shinier pistol. Another method of 
contrast. It's not just a color thing. In some ways, a bit of a texture. See that? Just a little bit of rustiness there. Highly technical term. So now we are going to start to make this a little bit more towards orange. No, we don't want it to be way towards the orange. We want a little towards the I might even grab a touch of that red. So you can see this is definitely a next level of lighter rust color here. Making sure that this has I almost wanted to say it had plenty of water in it, but that's not quite how it goes. I also want to make sure I leave enough of my blue behind. See how that's the, the oils are getting a chance to maybe mix together there. And sometimes yeah, I push that around, it, it creates a bit of a discoloration there. Is it rust? What is that? I don't know. As you see, the rust starts to get to, it has a little bit more of an orange look to it. It's the stages of rust. And I can always go back in and take some away. Let's say if I didn't like the rust at all. I want it to be a bronze anchor chain or, or anchor or something like that, it, like or brad whatever, and make it more of a patina instead of say the rust like this. You could do that too. Just wipe it away with a sponge or another brush. Good to go. Well, I just keep. I have to keep reminding myself that I've got plenty of time to play around with this and even with this save maybe even in the next stage if this has settled a little bit I will go ahead maybe and put that last out. I might not do all of the rusting as far as say especially what's gonna go on this anchor here I might save that last lightest layer for the, the next step where we go more into, again, odds and ends. You know, some highlights here and there. But is it is it super complicated? It is not super complicated. You just have to keep certain things in mind along the way. This is another good place for the lighter rust to be, the darker rust on top where the metal color is lighter, and now we've got the your lighter color on the bottom. As you do. How's about a bit more heat? Yeah, like that. Sometimes you can almost sort of stipple it a little bit. Now there I hadn't actually really had a chance to paint much of anything. So is it the heck with it? I'll just put rust there. Even though maybe it doesn't necessarily belong there that much rust. And maybe even on these guys again, just a bit of a... See a bit of a stippling effect there. It, maybe it gives him a little bit more of a pitting as, as opposed to more of a smooth finish. I mean, these are, we're, we're talking orcs after all, probably not the finest of metalsmiths and craftsmen. So, well, let us see what happens with a bit of rust on his literally his keychain there. This, not so much about rust, it's just about making that gold a little bit, have a little more shading on it. Oh, I'm going to go some more on this 
guy back here. Let's see what I can now do on this this buckle here. That's just it's all just a matter of light. We got to get some dark on there, and there you go. So it made just a, a little bit of a dark. Boom here. And I'm just I'm looking around at the chains to see. Yeah, this needs some more of the. Here, let's go with some of the lighter rust here. Let's sneak some more of that in here. This is what you can see now. Why I really did not fool around with too much in the way of say add a little bit of that our bright red with the yellow. And now maybe not it's quite so as I get a I'm gonna get a thinner or a smaller brush here. This is also not quite so thin either. A little less thin. See we've got almost like a little bit of a puddle there. Which I can see I can manipulate that with this brush or pull that around. Or I can pull the the darker color into it, maybe. How's about some of that? We got a little, yeah, we got another little kind of a collection point, maybe for rust there, some kind of oxidization, and getting sort of letting that mix a bit. Now back here, I don't know if I really want a lot of the lighter stuff going on back here. It's not really a point of interest per se. We'll go with that. And I might even you know, use a different brush here and stipple away at that, push it around. See, it, it's not always just orange or red. It actually has maybe a little bit of a. There's even a little bit of green getting in there. Oh, that's it's barnacles and not just rust. You know, you can look up. You can get references of rusted anchor chains if you really, really want this to look like a a real rusted anchor chain. You can. Look up references for it. This is really more about just uh, obtaining the effect. That's that's more what this is about. And see some of these areas here where we made those more of the bluish. Right now they're just sort of a rust, a lighter rust color. Uh, the lighter rust colors don't always have to just be down in the crevices. As we find, I get a few more of these, not just more orange and lighter, but but lighter too. But here, that's uh, let's let these kind of blend in, push these around. I will be curious to see what sort of little wild tendrils of lighter rust color have accumulated in some spots. I, think, I don't know if I necessarily want the end of the anchor to be super rusted because that's probably the one spot where rust would be sort of, I don't want to say knocked away, but I don't know, just worn away, maybe. Some of our rust there. Here, let's do a. Got this color. Let's use it for our key, maybe. I'm gonna have to get some more of my 
titanium white out here. A little bit of separation there. So some of the things in the that final thing is doing some maybe some glazes into these shadow areas too. So we're going to try and do that. We're going to get some more dirt colors out on the palette. And we're going to do some of those little uh, kind of pin line, panel line washes to get some things a little bit darker. And we're going to do that next. So as you can see off to the right, I think I found some that could be interesting. More so just in the, the shape of the patterns where it's kind of angular. I was... I always have to remember to not necessarily do all of the flowy kind of elven tattoo sort of things or elven designs that have just kind of seem to pop into my head before anything else. Speaking of before anything else, let us get some, let's get a little bit of our white spirits over here. We're going to do some, some glazy type things. Get those down into some crevices here. focus mostly on these to get a bit more definition in here and again these are those, those little panel line glazes see how much more separation we get in between the individual wrappings when we do this but we again we have to Quite literally drop it in place. We can't really paint with it. It's not a it's less of a brush stroke and more of a brush tap. Gotta just do that. Let it go. And then let's see what we can do here around a little bit of this stitching. Now I may even have to I'm actually gonna have to use a slightly bigger brush here, I think. Let's go with this guy. Oddly enough, it, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but yeah, that's what I needed. The other one just wouldn't have had enough, enough of the Payne's gray in there. Now we're getting some of that separation. Yeah, I just gotta see it. It even flows down into the little stitching holes there. I also don't want that to only be Payne's gray colored, so I'm gonna work in some of the raw umber with it too and we hope that that is subdued enough see look at that it's gonna see how it just goes runs right along the whole length of this little rope here even goes down along the the teeth so it's it's doing the work for us, and we, we like that. We want it to just do that stuff for us. Now I'm going to go back. Going to go back to some of this lighter stuff here. Now the reason why I didn't do a whole lot of things on the skin is because I thought, well, what if I'm going to do a bunch of these tribal designs in white on the skin? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to spend a lot of time. It's the same thing we talk about in the army painting. Another reason why I wanted to mess around with these kind of things is I wanted to tie into the last episode of the Splintered Fang. I just I was waiting for some things to dry. And believe it or not, I will have to wait for a lot of things on this to dry before I can actually then edit the video. It's a weird thing. That is why sometimes the, the timing of videos can be really unusual, to say the least. And now, this is where it gets especially interesting. We're going to make sure we have a little bit of color in this white here. It can't just be straight up white. It's almost a touch of a gray to it there. And I'm going to, let's see, let's go with this. Let's try this over here. And let's see what we can do here. We're going to try, I think, a line first. Yep, 
yeah, we'll, we'll do a bit of a line. I'm just going to make sure I got it where you can see it. And yes, this is over completely wet oil paint. Now this is a case where it does, you're going to want it to be pretty darn thin. And now, yeah, let's make sure we get, again, some of those other colors in there too. And let's do some some of these triangles that, that are going to emerge from it. Again, that is wet oils over wet oils. Because it is thin and because we let that skin tone, it, it's completely wet. If I were to touch it, I would wipe the paint away. But it's had enough time to just settle in place. And it lets me do this where the red is, as long as I do it in, in just one brush stroke, See, the red does not mix with it. Does not mix with it. And all of a sudden, our now our skin tone becomes that much darker. I'm going to mix a little bit of that. There's a little bit of green in there, too. And this is where maybe I, I change things up. This is where maybe I put a diamond inside of here. or some other form of a triangle or whatever. Here, maybe I'm just going to do this. this. It was more the idea of it rather than, oh, I'm going to do that exact pattern. So again, I'm just trying to get my hand something to rest on, like my thumb. There we go. See, it, it's not it's this is not a very elaborate pattern or anything crazy but I don't know I think that gives it a little something now let's say I, I wait for this to dry and then I can actually go in there and maybe you know, do some more stuff with it put a quick little glaze over the top of it I could do that too This is a little pattern right there. A little bit of a pattern, a little something. Doesn't have to be something that takes hours and hours. I mean, with with him, would it really be super complicated? I mean, he's, he's a black orc after all. Most times you just see him with a handprint down their face. But... I, I like that. That's pretty fun. Maybe I don't even do the other shoulder. Maybe I do. Maybe I do some the pattern down here. I did want to get something on his head, though. I thought I like maybe the diamond shape. We'll go back to that here. Maybe we'll go back to that right here on the top of his head. Orientate it, hopefully, relatively well. Okay, and let, let's give, let's complete the rest of that here. We'll do that, that sort of triangle motif again. And the idea is that it's sort of emerging from his, I don't know, almost from like from his eyebrows. And it shouldn't be like a tattoo. It should be more like it is painted on, ironically enough. Here, let's get some more of our stuff going here. I just need to balance where my hand is. And we continue with that triangle motif. This might take a little more. Might take a few tries to actually get it to stick there. Uh, yeah, okay, you can see that. And 
And maybe I even just let that sort of fade away a bit. Alright, so... Do we want to do some more on the back of his head? That could be interesting. Let's continue that. If possible. Maybe I even vary the thickness. Maybe this line's going to be a little bit thicker than some of the lines that were on his arm. So I, I do think this gives him a very different look than, than what's in the picture. So again, I wasn't looking to just copy that. The, the two things, like, like I said, that intrigued me were the black leather, which I just hadn't done. And the that, that skin tone. I wanted to really try that. So we will... I'm thinking maybe another triangle type design. Maybe on his chest somewhere over here. This open one of these two. So we got a design over there. Let's let's see if we can maybe try something here. Like this. And I'm gonna maybe try to have the that multiple line design like look what you see going there yeah so we're gonna go we're gonna give it a line like this and then we're gonna do a couple of lines or a couple of I guess interior triangles here on this there now that's fun that's kind of fun. And then maybe something like this underneath it. And all this is wet paint over wet paint. But I'm going to say it's probably been at least an hour and a half ish since I last was working in this area with paint. At least an hour. 15 hour minute, yeah, something like hour 15, hour 10 minutes at, at the minimum. At the very minimum. And like I said, you can spend hours and hours more on this. If, if you, if that's what you want, you, you go for it. You spend more hours. Here, let's maybe do some more of the little dots over here, too. And like I said, I can maybe wait for all this to dry, and then I just really quickly take just a little bit of my oil and go over the top of it. Heck, I could just do it with acrylic, let it all dry, seal it. So just a hint of acrylic over there. Yeah, see, that finishes that off real nice. So it just does not have to be a, a real killer exercise. I think I'm going to go across his arm here. So let's see if we can do another one of these lines. It's going to go bisect this almost. And then I'm going to see if I can do a triangle here like we've done. That's just, it seems to be a motif. It seems to be a motif. Lots of triangles. He's the he's the protractor orc. Okay. Now I'm gonna do a second. I'm gonna have another line. So I can't have it just. I don't know if I want it to be right. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do the second line here. Can you see that? Boom. And again, over here. See how I let that just fade? Literally taking the paint, and because what's underneath is wet, watch this. 
and it just sort of fades into the red. And maybe here we have a dot instead of a instead of more triangle, more angular things. And again, this is not white. I can still go lighter. It looks light on his skin, but it is actually not that light on his skin. We will now have some triangles pointed in the other direction. Like you do And I'm going to double down here also on another set of, if I can, a second set of these lines here. And once again, this is very, this is very thin. And you say, well, why can you do that? Maybe your last layer was thin on the, on the skin tone. Because I left it sit there long enough and get that almost an hour, or if not more. I want to say it's like the paint is dry, but it's almost, it basically thickens up the paint because it has had a chance to sort of, again, kind of coalesce a little bit. So it's one way to, to be cheeky and actually kind of force your paint to be the way you want it, to be thicker or thinner or whatever. And now let's see if we can just do some some of our little dots over here to complete this. Now I, I'm gonna go. At, there's things that I can I have to do here that I just I can't do with with all the lights in the cameras because well it's it's wet oils, and then I do have to. Sadly, I have to wait for this to kind of dry before I can take the pictures because there'll just be shiny reflections everywhere. So it sometimes it'll take at least another twenty-ish hours of drying. It doesn't have to be dry to the touch; it just has to be drier. That's the that's what I'm looking for. So there was see we got our dot pattern work in there now. We've got some tattoo things on him. We could here. Let's let's see one of his hands. If we can do a similar, we'll, we'll kind of do this here. Let's go. This will be the last thing we do here, and I I hope that this gives you some ideas. I say I don't want this to be a three and a half hour tutorial. That is really not what I want to have going on. I want this to, if possible, disappear underneath this, which it does. Give it a second line there. And let's say, I go, oh man, I don't I just don't like what I did right there as as far as the, the width of the lines. Well I can take some of my darker color and look at that. Just like what if it was acrylics, right? We're making an adjustment to it. But we have to be very direct with it. We can't play around. So I I do want to say thanks to everybody for supporting supporting me here and actually too on on YouTube and Twitch I, I really should say thanks for that as well because those are every bit as important as this to basically our continued survival so and I know things are just it's not easy for anybody here so I, I do hope that everybody's okay out there I don't really I try not to focus on that too much. I I try to have these be the distraction from all the other things that are going on maybe in people's lives that this is not 
like the happy little easy distraction, right? But it, it's one that really requires your concentration. It, it's throwing new ideas your way, which then kind of gets your brain cells going, but concentrating on just basically anything else, <laughs> except whatever things are happen to be at hand. And I, I do hope that works. I, I hope that this is not... We well, don't say, oh my gosh, another super complex thing that I've got to think about. I really hope you almost sort of see it as a welcome distraction challenge or challenge distraction, something like that. But there we go. That's really fun. I've never really done a pattern like that before. So that was fun for me to just play with it for the first time. So thanks again, everybody. I will catch you on the next session here it's gonna we're gonna try and keep these 70 now that I've got several of these in my hands I can actually keep these 75 mils going and he will look very different in the pictures obviously because he won't be quite so shiny but thanks again everybody and I'll catch you on the next one